I thank the gentleman. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Conley, for five minutes. I thank the chair, <clears throat> and I thank uh, both of our panelists for being here this morning. Um, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, I will, uh, with your permission, enter my full statement into the record, but I, I must say I continue to be bothered by the fact that the approach to trying to deal with the issues of solvency and long-term viability of the Postal Service continue to be ad hoc, and I, I must confess to some disappointment in the GAO report in particular, uh, that we're not looking at a more comprehensive new business model approach. Um, ad hoc cuts to delivery service may save money in the short run at long-term cost in terms of uh, customer base. And, uh, and I, I think Mr. Chaffetz raised some very legitimate concerns about going from six to five days a week. I, I would note with historical interest that this discussion occurred in 1976, uh, where a similar situation was faced, and the Postal Service again said, if we don't go from six to five, we'll never make it. And subsequently, of course, the Postal Service actually experienced some record profits uh, without cutting service from six to five days. Um, I'd like to ask the GAO rep, uh, you know, we keep on talking about this $238 billion in cumulative losses. And, and I bring to your attention the thoughtful testimony of, the CS, uh, of CRS, which says uh, you have to look behind that number. Uh, first, uh, there are certain assumptions made about what will or will not happen in terms of economic growth and customer base. Uh, for $238 billion. Secondly, you'd have to ignore the statute uh, that says uh, there's a statutory debt limit, actually, in USPS. And then you'd have to assume Congress does absolutely nothing for 10 years and that uh, you'd borrow $231 billion from the U.S. Treasury. Uh, and uh, uh, that's a little hard to believe. So I, I'm a little concerned that in banding about this $238 billion number, uh, we're ignoring some obvious things that are going to happen. And it's, it looks, frankly, a little bit like a scare tactic uh, to get us to make some, some decisions that may or may not be popular. And they may, in fact, be viable decisions. But how real, really, is that $238 billion number? And would you care to respond directly to the Congressional Research Service report, page 11, that lays out the flaws in this $238 billion number. Well, I, I, I appreciate the question. In, in looking at- Could I beg you to speak up? Speak closer to the mic, I can't hear Certainly. you. Certainly. In, in looking at that uh, number, I mean, we realize that is the number that says if nothing else changes, and I agree. It's very, things will change. There's attrition that's expected. Uh, one would, you know, given the drop in volume and uh, revenue, uh, the idea that the Postal Service is to be self-financing, one would expect that that uh, number is probably the, by far, the, the worst case scenario. Uh, it is the number that's put out there in this, to provide some context for what happens if nothing were to change. It's, but it's understood that things would have to change in the interim. Well, and, and, and we would do nothing for 10 years. I would assume that would not be the case. Right. So how real then is the $238 billion number that's been bandied about in testimony here and in the press? And I, I mean, one, one begins to conclude it has no basis in fact at all, other well, than to scare people. Uh, I think that it's a, uh, I think it's a starting point. I mean, again, this is a number that the Postal Service uh, came up with, but it's, I think, to provide an illustrative case of, the, uh, of not doing anything. And if nothing's done, then you will face those kind of challenges. Could I ask Postmaster General Potter to respond to that? Uh, well, I agree with what he just said. It's what happens if nothing is done? We did lay out a way of closing $123 billion of that gap. And again, through aggressive management, focus on productivity, there's, a, there's an element of growth that's built into that $123 billion. However, there is a sizable gap beyond that. Yeah, uh, can I interrupt you just one second there, Mr. Postmaster General, because you make a very good point. You'd have to assume for $238 billion to be real, we do nothing, including you. You've already said you're going to use the authority you have 
to make reductions totaling $123 billion. Is that correct? That's correct. So the $238 billion number is already not real. It's a theoretical number. A theoretical number. Right. Except that you've already announced here you're taking steps to make sure that theoretical number is never real. Exactly. Thank you.